What's new with ElectroAir, I am very pleased to say that we finally have been approved to replace magnetos, both magnetos, with dual electronic ignition systems. We received some of the approvals uh, May of last year, and then December of this year we received the approval for backup battery, and then also the approval to replace the Bendix single drive dual magneto, both four and six cylinder applications. So you got all covered? I, pretty much. We have every, almost every airplane covered for either, you can do either do a single electronic ignition or a dual electronic ignition. Uh, if you do dual electronic ignition, the requirement is you have to have some sort of backup power. That can come from either a dual bus aircraft, a backup alternator, or the latest, which was our uh, backup battery approval. Of course, electronic is just so much more efficient. Uh, the thing I learned from owning my Glass Air 3, which was a combination of electronic system and an old mag, boy, I'll tell you what, you switch those in flight, there was such a difference between the two. And, and even more impressive is when we go to dual electronic ignitions. We recently replaced a Bendix single drive dual magneto on a Lance 2. The feedback after 50 hours of flying so far, his fuel savings 2.7 gallons per hour. He's picked up an extra 200 nautical miles in range. So he can go 950 miles at 150 knots in a Lance 2. This is probably one of the few modifications you can do on an airplane that actually has a return on the investment. So for the f folks out there with their Cessna, Piper, Beach, whatever, and are looking for a better way of doing things, what's the process? How long does it take to install? Who can do it? And oh yeah, how much does it cost? Well, let's start with the process. The process, first of all, would be reaching out to us. We kind of work through, I think, a little bit of an interview, depending on your airplane, whether, you know, what your needs are going to be, what kind of flying you're going to do, as to whether you're going to do a single or a dual electronic ignition. The, again, the single ignition systems on a four-cylinder application, typically a gallon per hour fuel savings, better short fuel performance, better starting, all of that. Six-cylinder, a single ignition system, gallon and a half to two gallons per hour fuel savings. The numbers that we're seeing for dual ignitions on a six-cylinder are approaching three gallons per hour. Very we're talking real money now. We're, we're starting to talk real money now, yeah. I mean, very significant savings. Significant improvements in what you can get out of these motors when you put a high-energy, uh, variably-timed ignition system like ours on the airplane. Um, Price-wise, four-cylinder single systems are... Twenty-five to twenty-eight hundred dollars list. Six-cylinder systems are about four thousand, thirty-nine hundred dollars list. Dual systems, a dual system four-cylinder to replace the dual mag. I'm off the cuff about forty-nine hundred dollars. And for a dual six-cylinder system to replace this is about sixty-nine hundred dollars. There's some added parts that go along with that. Uh, the backup battery is extra. The switches are extra. That sort of thing. Time to install, we've always, the, the pathway that we've followed is if you have a four-cylinder single engine installation, budget for two days, the first day for sure, the second day to catch the things you didn't know you were going to run into. Six-cylinder system, three days. Two days, a little bit for sure, the third day to catch the things you didn't know you were going to run into. The struggle we have sometimes, we're overlaying a system onto aircraft that were never designed for this system in the first place, so you might have to move some stuff around to get everything to fit. Dual systems add some more time to it. We've developed a switch panel to replace the rotary key switches on those airplanes. So in the case of your 210 driver, if he's got both ignitions, it's electronic, you turn both ignitions on, master switch on, press the start button, the engine started. Go fly the airplane, when you lean, lean just you would lean normally go to peak and if you're going to go 50 degrees lean a peak take it 50 degrees lean a peak if you're going to go to rich of peak take it to the point that you want to go rich of peak what ends up happening inside of the combustion chamber the mixture control is actually pulled out further to get to that peak egt point and then you make your adjustments from there another way you can do it if you want particularly again if we're going to go back to the 210 driver or the bonanza driver we see a pickup in airspeed normally on those airframes. They're meant for performance in the first place. So lean to where you want your fuel flow to be, 
if you lean to the original fuel flow, in a Bonanza, we're seeing typically five to seven knots faster airspeed. If you want to fly to an airspeed, lean and, and bring the power to the airspeed and see where your fuel flow ends up. And I assume you do a sequential ignition check before takeoff? You do do a standard ignition check before takeoff. One of the things that you notice with our system, if uh, you're running an electro air and a magneto, shut off the electro air system, you'll see your normal RPM drop maybe even a little bit higher because it's taken less fuel now to get to that 1800 RPM. Go back to both, turn off the magneto, we expect you won't see any drop at all, no more than about 30 RPM. We are now into the modern age of ignition systems. About bloody time. <laughs> Absolutely.